Hi, beside me I've opened here an Excel file. As you can see, there are a lot of data into that file and they are in German. So I need to get a translation in French. I've chosen French because it's my mother tongue, but I could choose any other language, English or anything else. What I'm going to do is to use ChatGPT to help me in creating a tool to do that translation. Of course, I could simply copy and paste into ChatGPT and ask it to translate. But it's not the way I want to go. What I need is to have a tool that will continuously be able to do those translations for any Excel file. It's Christian from Vision 6D. I like to share a part of my knowledge. I consult and I train for companies. What we are going to see is how ChatGPT is going to help me create a program in Python and this is going to open me that wide door of AI engineering. And if you want to advance your skills, it's really something that you could look at. So don't worry if you aren't a coder or a developer, you won't have any difficulties. You will notice that the future programming language might be nothing else than your mother tongue. If you had experience with coding and development in the past, this is an excellent opportunity to level up your skills. As of today, we estimate that about 100% of coders and developers had already an experience in creating some program with artificial intelligence. I'm working with ChatGPT in its advanced data analytics part. I'm telling it that I'm going to load an Excel file and I would like it to read on a specific worksheet the column H entitled in German Bezeichen. ChatGPT is going to read it. It's giving me as output the first rows it read and it's telling me that it understood what I expected. In the second prompt, I'm asking ChatGPT to read the column H, to do the translation from German to French, and to write the result for each cell in an additional column called I. In its happy tone, ChatGPT is telling me that it's really gladly that it will perform my task, and it jumps into an algorithm to do it. After a while, we notice that it's not managing. And what is interesting with an AI, it's that the AI is not stopping there. It will try other way to circumvent those difficulties. But after a few attempts, we'll notice that ChatGPT has to tell me, I'm sorry, I man don't manage to do it. Maybe you could translate this manually. And of course, it's not what I want. We've now reached a key moment. ChatGPT cannot perform what I want. And we are now going to enter into AI engineering. The reason why ChatGPT wasn't able is that it accesses Google translation services. For this, the AI needs to have access to internet to be able to interact with the translation services. As it is today, ChatGPT is unable to interact with that kind of services through internet. This might evolve in the future. So, it's then that I started to think, if he cannot access to these services, maybe that on my computer he can help me to create an application that would be able to interact with those services. And it's where we will start to do 
AI assisted program. I have written the specification which is nothing else than defining in natural language what I expect from the program. ChatGPT is gladly answering that yes, it can help me in this process and is defining the different steps that I will need to follow. It will then generate a code sample and it will insist that it is a sample of the code. And then it will apologize that it cannot test or run the code and is waiting for my instructions. My instructions, they will be really simple. It's that I'm telling it that I'm going to copy the code to put it in my own development environment and then to test the code. ChatGPT on this is giving me further steps that I make sure that my development environment can run. For this, it's indicating me that I have to install and how to install the necessary libraries. Back to the code. So I have here my code and I will simply copy this uh, code template. I copy it and I have here my development environment, but you could simply have a notepad or any editor and you can paste the code. I have the code that is here inside. So now some explanations on the, the code. There is a first function that you see here inside, which is translate German to French. You see that it isn't complete. This depends now on the way you've asked the question. In our case here, I should certainly ask it to fulfill the content here of translate German to French. That is to say, I need one more iteration. After that, you see that it defines where the file, the Excel file is and the name of the Excel file. If you are in a window environment, this will be different. Anyway, in any environment, the path might be different. So after that, you see PD, which is there standing for the Panda uh, environment, which is here which is the one that allows us to easily access to Excel functions, Excel cells, Excel columns. And here down, there is a first check whether the column H does exist. Once this is defined as existing, it will apply the translation to the cell. And after that, you will see that it will output the resulting file. With that, it's the way that in this part of the software the translation is performed. Remember that this is a template and that it, could, it should be further iterated that it really works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump to the version I took in which you will see that there are some changes. First of all, you see here, I've started a statement where I have a conditional translation. It means that sometimes I use that software for tests and I don't want it to translate everything. So anyway, here I have the function, the call to the function where I will do the translation. What is important is that you see that I pass it the file pass. I define that the worksheet is called structure. The column is defined bezeichnung. And the language to translate to is FR, that is to say French. If you want it to be in English, you could put EN, English. ES for Spanish, DE for German, and many others that I don't know. So, this is the way to call the function. What you might 
say is um, it's not called translate the column but it's called translate in batches so when I launched for the first time my program I had some errors one of the error was that the system was blocking and by copying the error message to ChatGPT, ChatGPT suggested me to work in batches. That is to say, with smaller chunks of translations. In my file, I have more than 550 translations to be performed. It's true that in the first version, I was sending everything just at once to Google. And of course, the Google free service was struggling with it. So I chunked this in pieces of 10 translation to be performed one after the other one. This solved the issue. Here you will see that if you are under window as I am, this is the way to define the path and the name of the file. You might be curious why do I have here a function which is called test translation? That is to say that I perform a single translation before to enter in the loop for the 500 translations in case that something is not going or not working with the network, with the Google services. So with that, I have a few lines of code more than what was proposed by ChatGPT in the beginning, but all what you see has been performed in interactions with ChatGPT. To give you an idea, from the moment I thought I could do an automated translation till the translation got tested, to its final state, as you see here, I needed about two hours. So I think this is really an achievement and I wouldn't have been able to do this in, I would say, less than one to two days if I didn't have the help of ChatGPT. I will now run my program that you can see how it works. So Python is interpreted code and I just launch here my program. So it's preparing. I had the test translation, which is a translation of hello to bonjour. And then after you see the batches are running and it's why you say, see that the program is sometimes working, blocking a bit, working, blocking a bit. So these are the translations which are now ongoing. The translation processing is now done. We can read here down on the last line that the translation is completed and what is the name of the translated file and where to find it. In the file itself, we find the two columns here and we see that for each element that we had in German, we have now the counterpart in French. So you've seen that approach, that way to enter into AI engineering, to do some development with your natural language. What you must understand is that there were some mistakes and errors that were ongoing. And every time I ask ChatGPT, either by copying the error message or by asking ChatGPT, by uh, saying what was going on, asking it for a solution or for an ID. Every time ChatGPT proposed me some codes that I copied and pasted into my program. And that's an iterative way in which I managed to get the program that you just saw running. So I really think that this way to work is opening us a wide way to work in the future for development 
are small tools that could really be useful in helping us improving our productivity. So now I'm fully aware that I didn't dig a lot into Python. I'm fully aware that I didn't show you how to install the environment. If you have questions, if you have remarks, if you've done your own experiences and that you have different results, better solutions, worse solutions, I'm really happy to hear from it. So do not hesitate, post comments. And now all what I'm left is to wish you all the best on that journey to artificial intelligence and see you soon in another module. Bye-bye.